Hey guys, hope you're all doing great and welcome to Camera Shorts where we go over all the big camera news in a short period of time. And of course, if you are enjoying this series, I'd love it if you leave a thumbs up because that's always appreciated. But anyway, let's get started with today's news. So in today's news, the D3500 has just been released by Nikon. And this is a successor to the popular D3400, which came out not that long ago. And today's question is, who makes better cheap DSLRs, Nikon or Canon? Let me know in the comments below and I'll take a look. Now I actually made a lot of videos on the D3400 over the last year or so and found it to be an incredibly good camera for beginners and those who are looking for a good travel camera. Its specs and image quality are generally on par if not slightly ahead of Canon's similar cameras and it looks like the D3400 will also be continuing this trend. So what are we going to be seeing out of this new Nikon D3500? Well, like the D3400, it carries over the 24 megapixel DX sensor, which is definitely a plus as that was one of the better features on the camera. The D3500 will also have that 11 point autofocus system and will also still be shooting at five frames per second. Interestingly enough though, this camera will be even lighter than the D3400, coming in at just 365 grams for the body, which is actually really quite light for a DSLR. Another step up is an increase in the battery life, which is always nice to see. The D3500 will see a boost of 30% over the D3400 and will be able to shoot 1,550 shots compared to just 1,200 on the D3400. Both of those numbers are actually really quite impressive, especially for a smaller DSLR, which is using smaller batteries. Another interesting change is that the buttons on the back have been moved around. Unlike the traditional Nikon layout on the left-hand side, all of the buttons are now located on the right-hand side of the screen, which Nikon claims will be making it easier for one-hand holding. Now we are still unfortunately missing a fully articulating screen, which to me is a massive miss, especially compared to cameras like the likes of the Canon SL2, which have that articulating screen. And no real mention of an improvement on video specs, which again goes to show that this Nikon is generally going to be a photography specific camera. Now I'll be getting a Nikon D3500 into the studio very soon, so I can be doing thorough tests and reviews on the camera, so stay tuned for that. That's it for today's camera shorts. Make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.